I'm sure everybody or some people would want to know my reactions to this. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you are good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's heavy. Wow. It's it's really heavy. It's you know, Ghana is at a position where uh, leaders, especially this new government, now I use them, is trying to well one of his things says Ghana be on aid. And um, he's trying to get um, more entrepreneurs, more investors, more factories set up, and all that, and all that. And now, watching this, is I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> and, and family, we're talking about life and death, oh, the documentary. Yes. It's definitely black. Yes, we need the factories, we need all these things. And then I am saying, is this what is going to happen to us? Yes. They're coming yes. your way. <laughs> yes. That's never not happened. It has never not happened. Their tactics haven't changed. Always. Anybody Always. that has mm. a brown nation, it yeah. will happen to them. Yeah, but they're inconsistent. Uh, right. But the thing is, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is not. But the thing is to know the game. Yeah. Yeah. Once you know That's the, the game, you know how to play the game. So you know how they're playing you. So you know what, what traps they set I up. I hope our government know how yeah. to play the game. <laughs> so yes, I hope and I I pray that it doesn't turn out like this. I hope and I pray again that Ghana, as we are, will rise up about this and prove to the world again, prove to the world and re-emphasize what our first president said that. Oh, let the world know that the black man is capable of handling its own affairs. That's, that's only, that's only if we do not make these uh, agreements that cause Africans to be on the short end of the stick to get pretty much nothing. Yeah. You know, where they have access to everything. Mm. You don't give your enemy, because that's your enemy. Yeah. Understand who your enemy is. That's your enemy, they're not your friend. Yeah. Right. They will come nice. They will come sweet. They will even go to the villages and bring all the little things that they need. Next, they're coming in with the Bible. They're going to introduce religion because they're trying to get you to change what has given you power and wisdom yes. from centuries. Yeah. They will change that. And then they will come in and they will rob everything. They will take everything away from you. They are not your friends. I'm telling you. Those of us here from the diaspora have come to let our brothers and sisters know you have to rise up. We're telling you what the real deal is. Amen. This is no joke. This is what they do from South America, North America, the Caribbeans, the islands. All of these people here represent the other side of the ocean. We're telling the truth. I was I was talking to some brothers uh, earlier on. And I, I say that I, when I was young growing up, when I was in high school, and I use this as an example, when I went to the um, Kiko's dungeons, the Elmina dungeons, it was just like going for a field trip, an excursion, and just uh, going around and seeing sights and then, yeah. But then, until I met my brothers, sisters, my aunts, grandmothers, grandfathers from the diaspora and I went in with them and I realized this place is no joke. This place is no joke. And so it hit me that the people or our family will take it to the diaspora. We need you. We need you to come home because Again, I talk about the fact that slavery took away you and then when you went, nobody came back to tell the story. Nobody came back to tell what was happening over there. Nobody came, but now you are coming. You need to come. We need to build here with you. And so we need you as the investors. We need you as to come to come and share the light. Okay, and so everything that's happening on this bus over the next 
uh, an eye opener and uh, showing the light. And I, in my small way, will also send the light because a small spark of fire can turn to become a bonfire. And so we need that. We need more of you. Send your families, your relatives, friends to come and share the light because we all need to see the light. And so it's, it's very hard. Again, I say, the people of Ghana are not in the cities. The people of Ghana are where you see yes. around. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. And they work hard. Yes. No. When, I, when you go to the markets, and well, my parents, we like to buy in the markets. The market is the place, because you buy directly from the farmers, yes. the, the women. You yes. buy and you support them. Yes. And so that is the thing. And it's, it's, it's very, you know that you are helping families back you're helping your own people and so that is how it is so it's this it's yeah but you know what brother in, in, in order for us from the diaspora to come here we, we got to have land and, that, and that's one thing that the president has to understand you're asking for all of us to come over here what is put in place for us? If you we have, have land. If you have, a, you have plenty of it. They, yes, you do have land. However, a lot of our brothers and sisters from the diaspora, they have a lot of issues when they're trying to inquire that land here. Serious. A lot of issues. Because Brother Bo Money been doing this for a long time, trying to get <laughs> land and get us in a community type setting where all of us can work together and incorporate some of the the Ghanaians and all of that, and it's like one issue after the next when it comes to this land. So they have to do something about that to make it easier for us to come in and community live because we got to go in, we got to dig up things for drainage, we have to get our electricity going if we want that. We have to have that land first because I can't move over here if I can't get land. Land is so, independence. Well, yeah, again, you know. land is a very, very important thing. I'll talk about again those way, 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 way back in history. Land is important, and the same frustration you're going through, we Ghanaians also go through that same frustration. Unfortunately, yeah. Okay, we go through that. Yes. Well, can you expound on that right of a board? Because I did some research on that, and I thought it was going to be easy to, you know, to get into that, but like she was. Saying, I would say they're making it hard for you to um, do that. It takes a process. Um, it takes a process. Yes, it does. The thing is, um, I will give my comment, but I would recommend um, Mama Imakus, uh, One Africa. Um, you, she would have more to say because she is part of the few people who are giving um, dual citizenship here. The right of our board is open. Um, they are working on that. Uh, I could say they are working on that. But then, to Ghana is open. You know, once you come in and you just come, forget about it. You go through the system, leave in it, and then put in the uh, the process. It will it will take time, but it will get done. Okay, it will take time, but it will get done. You need land first, so you think about okay. writing <laughs> Yes. I saw on one of the videos that they were, I can't remember the tribe that they had sold four hundred. Um, um, of their adversaries to the Europeans. I found it what? They had sold some 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 slaves to the Europeans. Mm -hmm. And that the the chiefs had come together and said that any descendant of those that we sold, mm -hmm. we would give we had we would give them their land mm -hmm. because it is their land. Mm. And we will, if their descendants come, we will give them their land. Mm. So I want to get in touch with them. See if I want to. Again, you see, I was saying here in Ghana, go any chief, any town where you come. I have taken groups to villages and towns, and the chiefs are willing to give land to you. To come and use. You hear that, my money? Is that true? See, I mean, it all depends on the situation. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the chiefs are willing. The only thing is, yes, um, if the chief is giving a land that he has jurisdiction on, uh -huh. and the family and the community agrees, the land is yours. You sign an agreement, and it's yours. 
okay, it's easy to you for you to use what to build your house, to build your business, that yeah, you can use it. Again, I say that uh, people who come, um, our barristers who come to Ghana, if you want to cut and not go through the proper system, and then you want to do your own thing, and then, okay, you meet some few Ghanaians who are here talking to you and you want to do your own thing, you might get it wrong. No, that's the wrong thing to do. Don't do that. Go through the system. Okay, go through the system. And then also link up with the folks and brothers who have already come here to stay. Because they will know how they went through, they will help, they will give you um, recommend it. And here, what spreads, what works is word of mouth. And so that is how you will get to get seminated, get to get in the system and then go. And it's easy. Living in Ghana is not, yes, there are infrastructural problems. But if you go past them, you would enjoy your stay here. Okay? I believe that. Yeah. I'm already enjoying my stay here. I don't want to go back. I know. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. So let's let's get more deep. Let's get more deep a bit. Um, uh -oh. He said, "Let's get more deep." Come on. Don't make me start crying. I don't think too. I'm trying not to start crying. Come on, go. So it is it is it is estimated that about 12 million Africans were uh, enslaved and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean. Some say 12, some say 25, some say 13, some say... So there's a, a lot of numbers and that goes around. But they forget the account of those who had to journey. Exactly. They forget the account of those who had to get the dungeons. They forget the account of those who had to die on the ship. And jump overboard in the ocean. And those of us that died on the plantation. those who so I always start with the journey of an enslaved African is never easy. Every stage gets harder and harder as it goes. So let's go back. The Africans in themselves understood what slavery is. In that a system was practiced here. There were, there were the basic three ways a person could become a servant here in Africa. One, prisoner of war. Okay, two, a person owed a debt and had to pay it for. And then three, um, you were convicted of a crime. Those mean what? So let me use this one. When a person owed a debt and had to pay, pay, be paid for. So for example, I come to Rufus and I come and borrow. And then it's time for me to pay off. And you come and you want me to pay off and I can't pay. I can say, okay, I can let my son come and work with you um, to do whatever he does. And so when he finishes, you can come and I'll pay your debt on the farm. Okay? But when he comes, you are not to maltreat him. He has rights. You take care of him, even even in working on your farm, you take care of him. Okay? He is free, his children is free. And in Ghana, I can tell you, there are villages and towns where you go where people have actually started as slaves but has risen up to become chiefs. In Ghana we have a saying that you don't point your hand at the back of where a person is coming from. That means you don't look at the person's past or where a person is coming from to determine where he's going or where he become. And you don't call somebody a slave. You don't call somebody a slave. In that the person has rights and so, if a person ro rose from the standard of becoming a servant and now is a chief, would you go and tell the chief that you were a servant? You dare not, because the chief has power. You dare not. So it is a taboo, it is wrong for you to call somebody a slave. Okay, before I continue, we are just about to cross um, the river that borders, or that separates the Asante region from the central region. And the river, the name of this river is called Pra, River Pra. River Pra? Yeah, P-R-A, River Pra. River Pra. Yes. Uh, one 
know, the interesting thing about this river is um, the Asantes were fighting um, one other group called um, the Fantes. And, um, you know, the Asantes are no good swimmers. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, not all, not, not all um, here Ghanaians can swim. The people in the coast side are good swimmers. The people in the coast side are good swimmers. The people inland are not good because they don't have the sea. So um, one one of their chiefs, who was or the king, who was actually leading the war, when they got to this part, was ambushed and killed in in this river. So back then it was a taboo for any of the Asante kings to cross this river. So this is the river coming up. Yes, and the color of it is due to the mining activities. Ah, this is what you said Yes. But it used to be even milky than this one because uh, the government had to ban all uh, small-scale mining. Yeah. So whilst, once we cross this, we are now in the central region. We've left the Asante region. We are in the central region. Yes. Oh, this is a market right here. Yes, um, the, there are markets everywhere. Wow. Entrepreneurs, baby. <laughs> everywhere. In every small, big town, you have market. And um, there's a, a day that are set aside as market day, where people from small villages would converge in a big village, like a big town, and then they sell there. We used to do this in the state until integration. Once we got integration, we didn't have businesses no more. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. And they made sure of it because they would burn down any mm -hmm. business that was left. Yeah. That was black owned. Oh, yeah. I got to take a picture right now. Okay. So. I'll just start getting out with 